Support for WYES is made possible by Mary Lou Kristovich in memory of her husband, William Kristovich. Scott Laborde and welcome to Steppin' Out, spotlighting the New Orleans area's arts and entertainment scene. Seated at our table tonight, drummer and jazz historian Barry Martin. Good to see you, Barry. It's been a while. Good to Hello, see you, sir. Peggy. All right. <laughs> Poppy Tucker, host of the award-winning radio program <laughs> Louisiana Eats, airing twice weekly on WWNO Radio. Hello. Hello, Peggy. Making his Steppin' Out debut. Yay! Trumpet player and composer Marlon Jordan. <laughs> hi, welcome, hey, Marlon. And he'll be playing for us a little bit later with a trio. We're really thrilled. Good to see you. Good kiddo. to see you, too. And stepping out theater critic, Alan Smason, editor of the Crescent City Jewish News. But first up, Poppy, eating and dining, but doing good and doing well at the same time, right? Well, all of that, Peggy. Yeah. However, we're going to start off by saying congratulations to both Sterling Constant and yes. Antoine's because yes. Sterling is celebrating 50 years mm -hmm. of employment at Antoine's. What a special place he has in so many, many people's hearts and in their lives. Look how darling he is. They're going to honor him at a luncheon next week. I can't wait to see him. So congratulations, Sterling. And then, <laughs> yes, having fun and surprisingly doing good. I don't think a lot of people who haven't been have a grasp of Tales of the Cocktail. And of course, the tales are coming up upon us. July 17th through the 23rd. This is the largest gathering of cocktailians, whether they're liquor producers, whether they're bartenders, they come from all over the world and exchange ideas. And they're doing new things this year. First of all, on the first day, the 17th, which is a Tuesday, there's going to be from 10 to 5 a sustainability summit where Anne is bringing together some of the best minds on sustainability to encourage bartenders and, and bar owners to create an environment that will have a collective impact by doing things that will sustain the earth. She's doing a lot of serious things this year. I'm very impressed that also on Tuesday there's a sexual assault prevention training seminar mm. because there are terrible problems in the bar industry mm. and anyway, so she's taking care of that or trying to. Then the other things that are going to be going on, they're a little bit more lighthearted and fun. You can attend the Bar in Depth series and that will get you right into the minds of some of the world's most successful bar entrepreneurs mm. from all over the world. I am really intrigued by a new product called Seed Lip. And uh, it, this is what to drink when you're not drinking. This is the world's first distilled non-alcoholic spirit. It's made by a UK-based entrepreneur, botany enthusiast, and visionary, Ben Branson. And I'm fascinated with him and his product. Then, of course, Anne does great things, Ann Tunerman, like shop local. All attendees get discounts at local establishments, so she really tries hard to put the money back in the community. There's Sweat Local in its second year um, with Sweat Social. So during Tales, you can have Pilates classes, kickboxing <laughs> boxing sessions, and a lot more. Then on Thursday, the 21st, you've got Spirited Dinners happening across the city. There's 31 one of them this year, wow. cocktail pair dining experiences. And if you're looking to go to Tales for the first time, I strongly suggest you think about a $150 wristband that will get you into all of the tasting rooms. And in my experience, that's where the action is. There's, it's exotic, it's fun. Get a wristband for the tasting rooms. And then, if wine is more your thing, and the kids have all gone to camp, you can go to summer camp <laughs> at Cafe B, because it's time for summer wine camp. Yay. Happening starting <laughs> this week, coming up July 7th, 10th, and 24th, 6.30 to 7.30 in the evening. It's $40 per class, featuring reds, 
whites and bubblies on different nights and it's five pours and three snacks things like lamb lollipops fried burrata that's a spicy good deal. it's a great deal five pours and three really yummy snacks and you get a wine education by Brennan wine experts then I had a really lovely lunch this last week at a place that you know in New Orleans we're always looking at new places it's time to take another look at Captaville Captaville is seven years old now. And of course, it's on Captaville Street right there near Lafayette Square. They, oh, their food is so yummy. They have cast Captaville classics. They're serving like their red beans and rice balls, which I've stolen before and used in various things. They're great. <laughs> Truffled mac and cheese, a Cuban sandwich. And they have had a big menu revision. So they've got healthy stuff like shaved Brussels sprouts and kale salad. I loved their shrimp and avocado chop salad and their crab meat ravigot and monster fried soft shell crab really rocked. Mm. So the food is upscale. There's a $4 happy hour Monday through Thursday from 4.30 till 7. And then all day on Friday, 11 till 7, it's happy hour with drink and food specials. And they've started doing a monthly local craft beer tasting. For just $12, you can sample four different beers. The next one will be on July 13th at 6 o'clock, and it's going to be featuring beers from Tin Roof Brewery in Baton Rouge. Right. So if you've always been curious about that, you don't have to drive to Baton Rouge. Go to Captaville. Thank you so much, Poppy. Thanks, Meg. And New Orleans Magazine quiz queen Julia Street has a question for us. Last time, Jared Jones named three of the four uptown thoroughfares affairs that are named after American generals. You could have answered General Taylor, General Pershing, Jackson Avenue, or Washington Avenue. Now, tonight's question. Name two local avenues named after signers of the Declaration of Independence. Email your answers to steppinout at wyes.org. Our prizes, a year subscription to Louisiana Life magazine. A tea towel with the message, nice buns, <laughs> just in time for a great grilling 4th of July weekend from our friends at wearablevegetables.com. And a $50 gift certificate from our buds at Kitchen Witch Cookbooks, which is on Bayou Road. You can visit wyes.org for our online calendar to see our lineup of events. You can also link to our WYS YouTube channel to view our program. And now, Marlon. Marlon, you look like a little kid, but you've been around for a long time. And of course, well, as thanks. all of us know, but maybe not all of us know, <coughs> you come from quite the family. Yeah, I come from a big kid, kid joy. <laughs> That's right. Right, exactly. Yeah, you say that. Musicians, your mom yeah, and dad, and my, three siblings. Yes, my Stephanie's brother, been on our show. Stephanie, my brother Kent, who plays flute, and uh, Rachel, who's a classical violinist. She teaches at Loyola, and uh, she was in the symphony for a number of years, and she's a professor of music at Jackson State, head of strings, and that's about wow. it. <laughs> and, and my well, other brother is an aerospace engineer, and you know that's <laughs> uh, yeah, all that, all that, you know. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Well, um, you are now playing on a regular basis at the high. Yes, with at the Sis, high. Yeah, at the with, bar. With, yeah, with, uh, yeah. Stephanie. Uh, uh -huh. Seven, seven o'clock every Friday and Saturday night till uh -huh. whatever. They they love us over there, and we love them, and it's now, great. great. Now you're time. working this summer on a jazz camp. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the mission of the fundraiser that we have at Little Jim's on Wednesday, uh, July. Uh, 12th, and it's at uh, all the faculty we'd be playing. My dad. Tell us the, the formal the name people. of the jazz camp. The New Orleans, uh, the Louis Armstrong Satchmo Summer oh, Jazz Camp. Oh, sure. Yes. That, you've been at that a while. Oh, yes, 20, 23 years. My, my dad's been the head of the program with Jackie mm -hmm. Harris as a uh, the, what you know the the founder. So mm -hmm. it's been a great time having the kids teaching jazz. A lot of great, great. jazz musicians, trombone and shorty. Everybody's been through the camp. Amazing. Now you're Wonderful. also working on some new CDs. Yes, I want to release a jazz a classical CD and a hip hop. CD all at one time, so. Is yeah. it all on one CD? No, no, it's going to be three. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can't give you that much. No. <laughs> oh, yeah. All righty. And I know, you know, of course, when it wasn't too long ago we had the Jazz Fest. You keep busy with that. Oh, but yeah. But you play, you, oh, you yeah, play a lot. Yeah, I play a lot, a lot of private, a lot of private things, you know, but uh, I'm, I'm going to be branching out. I should have a, a regular gig at, uh, the Preservation Hall. I just played that this oh, Tuesday. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, with Jeffrey Hill. So we, we uh, try to set that up right now on Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, what attracted you uh, to the trumpet? Uh, because it was left, you know, I, everybody else was playing <laughs> violin and whatever. I, uh -huh. I played violin and drums, but then my sister popped my string. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Then that, uh -oh. uh, you know, made me mad, so then I went to school and then the trumpet 
uh, instructor said, can you buzz your lips like this? I went, yeah. He said, oh, take this trumpet. And I went home and my and dad taught what? me a C scale overnight and he said, I think you can do this. <laughs> and I went back to school and the, the so teacher was, was like. So it was your choice. I mean, yeah, you it was my out choice. What you oh, wanted, yeah, you know? yeah. My dad never forced anything on us. Yeah. Well, yeah. congratulations for all the work you do. <laughs> Thank you. And Marlon indeed has performed, uh, gee, at Lincoln Center and all over Europe. We're glad he still, though, calls New Orleans home. We'll hear the song Sandu, written by Clifford Brown, also performing with him tonight, Jamal Batiste on drums and David Pulpis on bass. Let's take a look. Fridays and Saturday nights at Jazz Live at the Hyatt. 
eight block kitchen and bar with the Stephanie Jordan Ensemble. Also, special thanks to Marla Boleyn, who, um, get a shout out to her, who helped coordinate our wonderful band tonight, NOLA Talent Entertainment, and that uh, nolatalent.com, uh, and you see the information. But thank, thank you very much, Marla, on that. And we are so glad that Barry Martin, uh, more contemporary jazz, now we're more traditional jazz here. But Barry, not only, of course, do you play the drums and have your own band, but you love jazz history. History. And oh, you yeah. are quite the historian, aren't you? <laughs> well, so they tell me. I suppose I must be. But I've been doing it a long while. You know, <laughs> you have. But these days you've been focusing on sort of your own reminiscences of the famous Riverside jazz album. Oh, yeah, and yeah. Cy Fraser, your drum teacher. Tell me us about that. Well, the Riverside stuff was in 61. Riverside was a big recording company in those days. They came to New Orleans. And a man called uh, Herbert Friedwald talked to them. He was a student at Tulane. Talked him into recording all these bands. I couldn't believe it. And I'd only been in town for about a week and a half. And all of a sudden, every day at the Jeanne Hall on North Robertson. Fraternal organization, yeah. You could go and hear legends of jazz recording. I mean, just Jim Robinson's band, Peter Bocage. I mean, Oh, the list is endless. I mean, uh, <laughs> Bill Russell and I used to walk over there. Jazz historian, famed jazz historian. Yeah, yeah. and famous uh, friend, too. And violinist and yeah. good friend. Yeah, many, yeah, many hats was, that I he wear. Yeah, people mm -hmm. say, was Bill your mentor? No, I mean, we all, he didn't have a mentor. I didn't have, we just, but we saw the same in well, you he know. was such a champion of the music. Oh, he came fantastic. here. He wasn't just like you. Yeah. He wasn't from here, but he loved it and did so much for the musicians and just hung out, too. Yeah, he was always around. As well as a musician, I should say, because he was a talented violinist with yeah, the Yeah, but Ragtime. nobody ever knew that until later on in his life, oh. see, because he didn't. He recorded, because he yeah. kept recording yeah. the yeah. bands. Yeah, he huh? recorded Bunk's band and George Lewis, uh, all the famous sessions, and Bill did, you yeah. know. And he's never got the credit he deserves, you know. He is I underappreciated, do. I think. And he came to the, the Riverside, every session of the Riverside, we walked over, it was on North Robertson. He didn't have far to walk from his store. The only one he missed, his niece, Jenny, came, and she was a violinist, little girl, little bitty girl, and he had to stay home and teach her. <laughs> so he missed Peter Bocage, who was a violinist and a trumpet uh -huh. player. The classic oh. session, bad. Bill missed it. I, he never. I kidded him about that for the next twenty years. Well, you know. what we should point out, and I really enjoy um, looking at it. BurgundyStreetPress.com. Yeah. People can go and look at. In effect, you and Bruce Rayburn, who's the head of the Hogan Jazz Archive. You all have these reminiscences. He asks you questions. You talk about your memories of the Riverside recording sessions, which, by the way, are available on CD. Oh, yeah, The yeah, audio yeah, yeah. Uh, sessions. And then also Sai Fraser. But it's really fun. If you're a jazz, a traditional jazz fan, it's really very interesting to hear your reminiscences on this. And plus, you and Bruce are going to engage in conversation next week. Tell us about that. Yeah, on the 6th of July, we do a show that's called, wait a minute, what is it called? Funerals, Second Lines. Funerals, parades, and second lines. And it's at the Mint on yeah. the third floor. And it starts at 2 p.m. And it's always packed out. So come early. That's a, one of those National a Park table. Service uh, yeah, sponsored yeah, yeah. by the National Park Service. And really illuminating, uh, to say the least. And, and that um, third floor of the, of the Mint, which they share, the, the, right. this collaborative venture, right. is so fabulous in terms of acoustics, too. Yeah, uh, that's yeah, a great yeah. room. One thing I've got to tell you, when we were talking about the films I made, the film on my drum teacher, Sally Frazier, it's fantastic, brings back so many great memories, but also Sally Young and myself have now been working on a film about Harold Dejean. Oh, okay, good. So that might be up there and soon, too? That'll be up there soon. Everything well, is lovely. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what it's going to be called. Good. Everything is lovely. What Mr. else Dejean could you call it? You know? <laughs> well, thank you, Barry. We All look right. forward to hearing more and seeing more from you. Now it's time for our artist spotlight. Tonight we are featuring works by New Orleans artist, very contemporary acrylic artist, William B. Crawl. This is titled Faye Dodo. And we also have Morning Commute. Crowell is a member of the Arts Council of New Orleans, and his work was recently added to their permanent collection and also to the collection of the New Orleans Museum of Art. Here's Piano Bar depicting, look at that, oh my goodness, Alan Toussaint with Professor Longhair on the piano. Crowell's series of snapshot portraits of everyday Louisiana life, Freeze Frame, opens tomorrow evening at 
at the gallery at 600 Julia with a reception from 6 to 9. It will be on view through July 31st. Now time for Ellen. Well, last week I mentioned just briefly the Kenneth Lonergan play, which is called Lobby Hero, just uh -huh. opened at UNL last week and unfortunately going to be closing this week. But this is something I really want everybody to know about. It's a four-person cast. It's set entirely in the lobby of a Manhattan apartment building. It stars Patrick Hunter as Jeff, who's somewhat a ne'er-do-well, a hapless security guard. His supervisor, William, played by Thaddeus McCants, and two cops, veteran Bill, played by Garrett Prejean, and rookie Dawn Kristen Schaffner. They're investigating a recent rape and murder. So Lonergan really uh, just won the Academy Award. He employs a number of devices in which key people talk in pairs to one another. That moves the action along because what happens with one conversation moves the action along with the others. They don't really have really a rare uh, situation where all four are on stage at one time. So it's really interesting. Now, Jeff is, is basically a schlub, as I said. He tries. He's never <laughs> actually able to catch the brass ring of life. Uh -huh. He's uh, on the midnight shift because that's basically all he aspires to. Mm. Uh, you know, basically, it's, it's a very interesting character that he plays. Now, interestingly enough, um, he tries to convince his his supervisor of his good intentions. His supervisor has something on his mind. And again, that, I mentioned that uh, Thaddeus McCants does a really superb job playing that role. And then he's got this fixation for what I would call the likely improper and the very unlikely because he has this fixation on the female uh, police officer, Dawn. Mm. And of course, uh, that's never going to happen, at least not uh, at the very beginning. Uh, basically, she has a thing for, if you will, her partner, and there's a lot of uh, dynamics going on between all the four. Uh, he's named as an alibi witness, uh, that is the uh, the supervisor, by his brother on that murder investigation. And so now the police really want to know a little bit of what's actually going on. and. The stories that are told between the, the uh, characters uh, really move that action along. I, again, great writing. Kenneth Lonergan, Academy Award winner. You'll love it at Lobby Hero, the UNO Performing Arts Center. And I believe it's the Lab Theater. Okay? Now, I caught action uh, last week, too, of a kid's show. Now, normally I don't go to a lot of kid's show, but this one was directed by Ricky Graham. That got me interested. It stars Anthony Harvey as James. This is James and the Giant Peach. Yes. And it features music by Benj Pasek and... Uh, Justin Paul. Both of those, of course, are familiar names because they just won the Tony Award for Dear Evan Hansen, and they also won the Academy Award for La La Land. This is great music, and it stars a cast that is really, really very well done, uh, including Eli Tim, Gabriella Trentacoste, and Ashley uh, Lemler as as the two ants who are, are, are trying to get some money out of this whole deal with, with uh, this giant peach that James discovers, basically. Uh, and there's a lot of other characters, too. I really enjoyed uh, Matt Reed's performance as well as Whitney Mixon. So again, great singers from around uh, the area. Uh, they do a really good job. Again, Ricky Graham directs them, and I would recommend this very highly. Rogers Memorial Chapel at Tulane University. Also, opening up for a whole month is going to be Constellations. This is a show that uh, Christopher Ramage is putting on. Uh, it's basically going to be done at the Outlaw Pizza Company. And it's sort of hard to explain, mm. but basically it's it's a two-person uh, production. Basically, you've got a cast of two, and it's a man and a woman, but there's some science fiction employed in here, and it is set at the pizza parlor, and I would call it the mystical pizza. Uh, sort of like uh, uh, there's a lot of spirituality going on there as well. You'll enjoy seeing that. That's going to be uh, on St. Peter Street, and uh, South Peter Street, I should say, and it's going to also be uh, for a full month, so it, it's going to play for a long time. There is all going to be a concert after afterwards for the lady who's actually doing the, uh, uh, the accompaniment for the music. So you get a little bit of a bargain there as well. Also opening at Tulane's Shakespeare Festival, the New Orleans Shakespeare Festival at Tulane, The Tempest. That's going to be starting at the Lupin Theater this week uh, coming up, and uh, it's going to be running for several weeks as well, but I wanted everybody to know about that as well. And um, again, one of the other great things that's going to be happening uh, uh, is the uh, Theater at St. Claude. Jim Fitzmorris is, is again going to go on one of his rants, and we're going to hear him do <laughs> the last lanyap. This is going to be at the Theater at St. Claude, and there'll be more about that later. Uh, I think, though, that those of us who know about Jim, it's a very reasonable $15 charge to see him get into action. Uh, he is a man of words, and he does not spare any when he's out on stage. Again, that's going to be happening. And let's not forget, uh, you know, that, that uh, Jim's been doing a great job at the theater at St. Claude. We really need to support local theater. But uh, hopefully, he, he, he whispered a little something in my ear that uh, one of his productions hopefully will be coming up soon, and it will star a very well-known celebrity who I am not at liberty to divulge. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, all righty. Barry, your pick of the week here. Oh, 
Um, your favorite CD? You got a favorite CD? A anything by the Shotgun Jazz Band. The shotgun Jazz yeah. Band. Okay, Poppy. Coming up next Thursday is the San Fermin Dinner and the celebration of the bicentennial of the Orleans Ballroom. For 200 years, the Orleans Ballroom has been the epicenter of New Orleans society. This is a four course feast with wine and I would just say go, go, go. They say we're, we're yeah. red and white like running oh, of the that's bulls. That's a good idea. Yeah. Great. Marlon. Definitely jazz camp fundraisers, Wednesday the 12th. The faculty, <laughs> everybody's gonna be there. Okay, so. thank you. <laughs> yeah. All right, the JPAS uh, plate is very full. The first thing they're doing is at the Jefferson Performing Arts Center, Jambalaya the Musical. It's only gonna be running this coming week, uh, though, uh, just for, for a few days uh, on Airline Drive. But coming up for two weekends is gonna be Wine Lovers the Musical. This is exactly the production that was done at Le Petit on several cruise ships recently. Holly Ann Palmer's uh, helping produce this. JPAS really has a feather in their cap. You get to drink the wine, you get to watch it play. What could be better than that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Before we go to my picks, we'd like to acknowledge the passing, though, of New Orleans fashion designer and textile artist Ray Cole. A celebration of his life will take place Saturday, July 7th, from 4 to 6 p.m. at the New Orleans Center at 3330 St. Claude Avenue. And next week, a profile of this talented artist will be presenting that. And now my picks. Don't forget Essence Fest continuing through the weekend with concerts at the Superdome and free daytime events at, of course, the Convention Center. Check out the website for the full lineup. Don't forget the Marine Corps Band New Orleans Independence Day Concerts. They play on Sunday at 3 p.m. at Trinity Episcopal Church on Jackson Avenue. And then on Monday, they headline City Park's Happy 3rd of July. That is so much fun. Gates open at 6 p.m. on the Woldenberg Great Lawn. So you bring your food and your uh, picnic uh, uh, basket and blanket and all that. The concert begins at 7 p.m. Then at 9 p.m., a fireworks display will begin in front of the peristyle. Visit NewOrleansCityPark.com for details on all of that. And then on Tuesday, you can go forth on the river with live performances starting at 5 p.m. at the Crescent Park along the river in, in Maroney and the Dueling Barges Firework Display from both sides of the river at 9 p.m. Visit Go Forth on the River for more information on that. Thank you all very much for being with us. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you. Happy Fourth of July. Good night.